Hi everyone, let's talk about Dice Stars. And this is kind of first impressions because I've only had this a few days, but I have played it a few times now. Kind of when I got it simulating two players and then doing the solo mode, and now I've played it with Rachel a couple of times. And it's it's a it's a nice solid kind of you know dice rolling fill in uh, sheet of paper game. You know, I really like these Quinto and the other one I've bought Nokmal. And there's there's a few more. There's uh, Octo Dice. It's another. One. It's a bit more involved, but you know the kind of idea of rolling dice to do various things, filling in a sheet. Uh, La Grand High is another one that's come out at Essen this year, which is you know a bit more involved. But I really like this kind of game in the first place, and this is a really solid one. The the idea where you decide how many to draw out of the bag doesn't make a difference sometimes because a lot of the time you just want a lot of choice, but. A lot, sometimes you know which ones you want, and so you don't want more left out for the other person to have a lot more choice or to be able to get a big score. And sometimes you can see that the other person desperately needs three stars, so maybe you should go away from your normal plan and take those stars for yourself on a on a smaller line, and you know get get some points, just so the other person can't finish that ridiculous line that they've got for. In when the game goes really quickly, because you know it varies based on what you picked, what you roll. Uh, you might not roll many stars throughout the entire game, or someone might finish their you know main grid really quickly, and the game will just finish. While and that could be bad for the people that went for the huge uh, six row down there, that are waiting for six stars to be able to double it. And in spending all that time doubling the row, you might have gotten that many points just by you know filling it in and and doing the normal thing. You can plan it out really nicely as well. There was a game that we played, I can't see the sheet right now, but there's a game we played where Rachel had doubled, I think, her four line, and she'd filled in everything with a number, and some really high numbers as well, because they'd maybe she'd t taken all the blues and it had been XX blue, and so you can really rack up points if you, if you work it out and double a line that didn't take many dice to multiply it, but you put some really big numbers in those lines. It can really pay off for you, where I tend to kind of do an average throughout the whole thing. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways to play it. It's very fast playing. It's very simple to explain. There's not really, you know, much uh, to get hung up on. But yeah, so far, I've really been enjoying Dice Stars. And if you like this kind of roll a dice and fill in a pad kind of game, then I would definitely recommend it. The solo version as well is actually, it's, it's very tricky. I'm not good at it. So I lost in the playthrough if you watch the solo part. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's another way to play it. It's a different way to play it because you desperately don't want to draw dice from the bag because you don't want more think more boxes getting crossed off at the end because it might if, if the boxes all get crossed off before you've finished yours, you're going to lose just whatever you scored, you're going to lose. But all of those boxes at the end, even if you didn't lose, you didn't win, but all of those boxes are worth five points for the dummy player at the end of the game. So... You know, there's a, there's a very different dynamic to the solo game, and that's a very good one too. So that was Dice Stars, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and it gives you a good idea of what it's like. And I will see you for the next game soon, and hopefully I'm feeling a little bit better and we will be able to do something a bit longer. Whoops, I forgot the bit where I say bye.